Alberta's Finance Minister Nate Horner there. Turning now to Ontario and its calls for the feds to intervene in Alberta's plans to leave the CPP. Ontario's Finance Minister is Peter Bethlen Falvey. He's with me now. Hi, Minister Bethlen Falvey. Great pleasure to have you on our program. Thanks for making the time. I appreciate you having me on, Vashi. Uh, Minister, of course, I want to start on the idea of Alberta leaving the CPP. And, and I wanted to ask you, are you really concerned about the province doing that? Or are you trying to change the channel from your government's own controversy with the Greenbelt? I'm concerned about uh, Ontario workers, uh, hardworking families, and uh, you know this is a this uh, the Canada Pension Plan has been a hallmark of stability, and and we have stormy seas around the world, economic uncertainty, global uncertainty, and one thing you can always count on is your pension, and you should count on your pension. And uh, you know I travel around the world, and and one thing they always say about Canada, you're a sea of stability, and I think the Canada Pension Plan really underscores that. So. Uh, the primary objective is to to make sure we have a conversation and uh, you know make sure that uh, all all voices are heard on this important matter. Alberta's retort so far has kind of laid out the fact that they haven't yet made a decision. They actually haven't even decided whether or not they're going to put this to a referendum. They're just in sort of a, a consultation phase. Again, why at this point in time did you feel it necessary to, to get out there and make a public statement? And does it have more to do with your government's own political issues? Not at all with regard to our issues. Uh, you know, as you know, we bounced uh, up to 40 percent in the polls. So we're, we're, we're continuing our plan to build Ontario. We're getting half a million people in. No, the reason is that this is a really critically important uh, part of people's lives right across the country. Uh, having a stable pension plan that's going to be there, you know, today and maybe 50 years from now if you're starting work uh, now. Uh, so that's uh, that's a key, key thing. And when the Alberta government launched this uh, publicly about a month ago, you know, I, I, um, I thought it was time that, uh, you know, a province took action and spoke up and called for a meeting. And uh, I, I, no, one, no one had called for a meeting, so I was the first to call for a meeting. And I'm very pleased that uh, not only Christian Freeland uh, uh, responded immediately to that and said yes, uh, so did the uh, Minister of Finance for, for Nova Scotia, who's the chair of our federal, provincial, uh, territorial uh, table. So uh, I'm very encouraged. Do you have a specific ask, Minister, of the federal government in this instance? Is it to prevent Alberta writ large from even being able to leave the CPP or to minimize the amount of the fund that they're they're entitled to ultimately if they do leave? Well, first of all, Alberta and any province uh, when it was constructed in 1965 has the uh, the right to uh, to opt out. Now there, there, there's got to be uh, obviously a lot of rigor on the analysis uh, to do that. Um, you know, in 1965, Quebec uh, did not participate. Uh, I understand now that their contribution levels are higher than the CPP, so uh, there's consequences. So I just thought it was very important that uh, we, we put this on the table and give it the, uh, uh, the, the importance of the issue to many Canadians. I know the federal finance minister responded to your request positively, saying that she would convene that meeting of finance ministers. Has she specifically said anything to you about the federal government's own analysis as to how much Alberta would be entitled to? Has she reassured you, for example, that they're not going to hand over more than 50 percent of the fund as it exists to the province of Alberta? No, we've had no conversations uh, like that. Of course, I gave her a call, a heads up on Tuesday that I'd be give, sending a letter I did on Wednesday morning. She responded. She was in Alberta. She responded publicly right away, as did the uh, the chair uh, of the Federal Provincial Council. So uh, I think that's pretty good for 48 hours work and uh, I'm very much looking forward to meeting with all my colleagues including Alberta and I look forward to that happening sooner than later. On principle, and I know you mentioned when the CPP was created, Quebec was not part of it. There is, and you, you talked about this as well, there, there's a part of the act that allows for a province to make this decision sh should they want to. Do you think that needs to be looked at or, or in principle do you agree with the idea that Alberta, if they want to leave, can? Well, I think that's the way it was constructed in 1965 to get everyone to the table. And, uh, of course, we now have nine provinces and three territories. And, like I said, it's a world-class uh, pension plan. It's been able to generate significant returns over, over the, that period of time, which, which allows for greater benefits and lower pay contributions. And I just believe in diversification. When you've got a bigger pool of assets and you can diversify that over a, a larger group, uh, that that speaks to stability and, and you just look at the performance of the Canada Pension Plan relative to just about any other pension plan around the planet. 
uh, we do we do very very well here in Canada. Yeah, and certainly, Minister, I don't I don't take away from those points. Um, my question, though, is is rather about whether the the act needs to substantive, substantively pardon me change so that every time there's an issue in the federation, there's not the threat of a province leaving the CPP and that stability that you mentioned. Uh, isn't threatened uh, at the same time. Do you think that should be entertained by the federal government? Well, it's a fair question. I mean, that's uh, maybe that'll be uh, discussed and probably uh, uh, everything should be looked at. But I, I think what we're really looking for is uh, some stability and certainty for the many people who live in a lot of uncertainty and higher costs right now. Uh, interest rates have gone so high, infl inflation we haven't seen in a long time. So I think, I think it is important that uh, we put those things on the table. But let me make a one thing also clear, is that I understand a lot of uh, Alberta's uh, grievances on, uh, on other issues, uh, like building infrastructure. You know, we're the fa one of the fastest growing places in North America. We, we accepted uh, a net population growth of half a million people last year on our track uh, for another half million. That's a million people over two years. We gotta, we gotta build infrastructure. Uh, Minister, I'm almost out of time, but I just want to circle back to where I started on the concept, the criticism from your opposition that this is just about a channel changer. On the Greenbelt, uh, so much of that is in your riding. Has the RCMP reached out to you in their investigation? No, the, no, they haven't. And, uh, you know, one thing uh, that was so clear to me in this, all of, all of this is that, uh, you know, we've got to, uh, we've got to build all kinds of housing. Um, you know, we have to build, you know, obviously condos, front door, back door, but supportive housing, uh, uh, modular housing, uh, you know, uh, uh, not-for-profit housing. It's not either or, it's and. And, you know, think about that. A million net population growth in two years. Where, where are people going to live? How can they afford uh, to, to live with the cost of everything going up? Getting your kids to school, the roads, the bridges, the subways. We've got four subways being tunneled right as we speak. And we have so much more to do. So I, I think the, the, it's not a channel changer. We just got to continue executing against our plan collectively to build Ontario. And, and in that plan, I, I certainly understand what you're laying out. I, li I live here in Ontario and, and we are faced day in and day out with the affordability crisis and, and a housing crisis as well. Your government had long insisted that the green belt was necessary to address that crisis, to build all the homes you just talked about. Does your reversal on that mean that you no longer believe that? Are you admitting now that you didn't ever need the green belt? What the premier said was the process. The motive was right. The process was not. So we've we've reversed that decision. It takes a lot of courage to do that. But you know what? We're moving forward to uh, collectively, municipally, federally, provincially. You know, I put in my budget last year that uh, we would waive the HST uh, for purpose-built rentals, and I really pushed the federal government to do that. And about a month ago, they finally agreed. So, you know, we can, when we do things together, and now we're seeing rental purpose-built uh, levels already, more investment coming in, that's good news story. When we work together, we get a lot more done. So you do think that the objective that your government had laid out that previously required the green belt, re green belt land to be swapped can still be achieved? No, no I mean, we've been very clear. We've uh, listened to the people. The premier said, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna lock it down with legislation that you can't change that. But, you know, the objective of building housing and, and health care, hospitals, long-term care, roads, bridges, you name it. Um, we can't be in gridlock forever. we got to move people and goods to market. So we're just going to keep executing against that plan. Minister, I'll leave it there. I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much.